Welcome to another episode of the Wandering Watercolor. Today we are working on the ninth page of the Fairy Tales and Legends watercolor coloring book. It's a coloring book for watercolor that I hand make using lithographs and watercolor paper. And let's get started. So this is the ninth page image. It's basically just a warrior elf sitting down, I guess kind of hanging out, looking at us. <laughs> so when we're done, this is what we're aiming for. And as always, <clears throat> excuse me, as always, I recommend having a scrap piece of paper, something to mix your colors on, like a porcelain plate, glass plate, anything smooth that you can mix your colors on easily. A brush, any brush works, a rag, palette of paint, um, any watercolor paint works just fine. Um, I make my own and I sell my own, but this is what I'm using. Uh, if you don't use mine, that's totally fine. I'm sure it'll, it'll work just as well. And um, always have a just a jar or a cup of water, obviously. And yeah, let's get started. Uh, I always like to kind of wet my paints first, just because it helps. Um, it makes it easier to pick up color and make it more vibrant. You can get a lot more pigment when you wet your paints first. Um, but you don't have to do that. So we will begin with coloring in the hair. Get some water. Let me bring my jar closer. There we go. So get some water. Get a little bit of a brown here. So the, the elf's hair is brown, and but it's not like a very vibrant brown, it's a, a little bit toned down, so I'm just going to use a little bit of the dark blue to tone down the brown color, and I'm just going to get a bunch of water. So there's a lot of hair, so we want to make sure we have enough paint, and that's about right. That's about the right shade that we're going for. We'll go ahead and we'll lay that in. Like that. And just carefully, just a flat wash. If you got a little bit of like shading or a different texture, that's fine too. Because we are going to add additional texture to the hair anyway. Because hair is obviously not just like a flat color. Okay, get that in there. The light source for this image is basically just right above. It's almost like it's high noon and she's just relaxing on the rock, maybe on the journey somewhere, taking a breather. Okay, just fill all that in. It's a lot of hair. There we go. Cool. Okay, we're done with that. Rinse our brush. Next, we can go ahead and mix the skin tones. So we'll grab some of the yellow ochre. If you don't have that in your palette, it, it's a very common watercolor paint, but if you don't have it in your palette, uh, just use brown and yellow and just kind of mix it together maybe add some white and then to this we will add a little bit of this pink color if you don't have pink just use red I added way too much pink yeah so I'm just gonna grab some more yellow ochre and mix it in maybe a little more That's okay though, because we do have a lot of surface to cover, so having extra 
it is totally fine. Let's see. Does that look? That looks maybe a bit too orangish. Let me see. Yeah, maybe add a little bit. The pink is so strong. It's just a little bit is what's needed. Just a little bit. Kind of mix it in. Okay, I'm I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna add a bunch more water because we just initially just want to do kind of like a light wash for the blocking in of the color. So we're just getting a bunch of water. There, there's more pigment up here, so we're just kind of getting some water here. And then we're just gonna do the flat wash, which is basically no texture, no nothing, just blocking in the color. Like that. Like that. Same right here. And then right there. And right there. The ears. And just go slowly. Don't worry about being fast. Just kind of go in at your own pace. Make sure you're comfortable in getting the colors in proper. And then... And you can color over the, the details in the face. Um, other than the eyes, obviously. Just go in like that. You can even color the eyebrows. It doesn't matter, because we're just going to go right over them with the darker color, so that's fine. You may ask yourself, why didn't we color in the eyebrows with the hair color? Uh, that's because we're just going to color them in with the color that we use for the shadow on the hair color because eyebrows are always darker than the actual hair color. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of that right there. Okay, so I think that's basically all the areas where there's skin showing. So next, we can go ahead and mix the color for the skirt that she has, which is kind of like a kind of like a dull brown with maybe a bit of uh, a dull brown gray. Yeah, let's see. I'm gonna get a bunch of brown, a bunch of dark blue. Maybe more blue. Add more water. I'm gonna mix it in. More blue. So that's close, close to what we're looking for. But we may want to throw just a little bit of, I don't know, just a little bit of pink. Yeah, let's do that. Oh man, that's too much pink. Because there's like a slight hint of violet in there. So I'm just going to add more blue. It's like a very dark brown, violet, gray. Interesting color. That's about it right there. So I'm just going to add more water. Because the initial wash, as always, is just going to be the flat blocking in of the color. Let's see. I think the skin is dry enough, the skin color is dry enough to go ahead and 
color this in. So I'm going to do all of that. Like that. And remember the light source is from straight up above. You can see kind of how I went outside of the line a little bit here and then over the knee. It happens. No big deal. We'll just keep moving. And go in there. Like that. Okay, and then in between, so she's got like two belts, um, probably one of them for her pouch and one for the sword, and just kind of going in between here, and also going to go in up here underneath where the armor starts. Okay, that's good. Miss my brush. And then, let's see. Okay, I'm gonna switch my palette. I used up too much space here, so I'm gonna switch my, not my palette, but my mixing plate. Um, obviously, if you have a big plate that you're mixing your colors on, don't worry about it. So next, I'm just gonna get some straight brown. And let's see. Yeah, I'm not even gonna mix it with any other color. I'm just gonna dilute it with a bit with a bit of water. And then I'm just gonna do the initial wash right here. Like that. For the sword. And then also right there. And then same right here. For the pouch and then the first belt here kind of connecting all the way across and then the other one right there remember now they look pretty dark but always remember when it's watercolor, so when it dries, it will come out a lot lighter. And here. And down here, this boot. Okay, so that's looking good, and maybe even do like a lighter wash on the little bootstrap here. Same exact color, just a lighter wash. And you can see differentiation between the two. But yeah, anyway. So next, We can go ahead and I'm gonna actually mix the color for the armor. Uh, I was gonna start mixing the gloves, but we gotta wait for this to dry so they don't start like running into one another. So we'll go ahead and we'll mix the the armor, and we will do that by 
getting some brown, just a little bit, some light blue, kind of mix them together, gives you like a, almost like a slight green tinge of, uh, of metal, like a uh, gray, there is a very slight green tinge in that gray, but that's totally fine. Actually, I'm going to get a little more blue. There we go. And plenty of water, because it's a strong color, and it's easy to make it look very dark. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the water, and then go ahead and do the flat wash for the armor. Right there. And there. And then there. And there. Okay, so that's good. And then I'm gonna do a layer here on her. It's like a headpiece, like a crown. No, not really like a crown, like a, I don't know, just like a, some kind of a warrior's headpiece, like a metal bandana. <laughs> All right, so we got that. And I'm going to use the same color for the hilt of the sword. And pick some up from here. And go in right there. Okay, cool. Rin rinse my brush. And then the brown parts are still drying here. So while they're drying, I'm gonna go ahead and mix the, the part for the handle of the sword. So we still have a little bit of brown right there. We'll go ahead and we'll grab some of the yellow ochre and uh, if you don't have the yellow ochre, just mix in some brown and yellow. Try to get something approximating, something approximating that color. We'll go ahead and we'll put that in right there. Like that. And also, we're going to do the same thing right here. Okay. Let that dry. And while it's drying, we're also going to do the same right here and right here. I'm rinse that off. And I'm just going to get some, just some straight yellow ochre. Not mixing it in with anything, just a straight color. Just put in some water. And that'll be the color that we use for the gloves. We'll go ahead and we'll just do the flat wash. Just fill it in. Like that, get some more. Fill that in. Okay, looking good. Maybe grab a little more color. And then down here. Up here. And 
Maybe add a little more color to it. They look too pale to me. All right, so, and then the armband. Yeah, two. Okay, so that's looking good. Oh, actually, you know what? Grab a little bit of the greenish gray. I forgot to add some right here. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't bleed into the to the boot. And then right here. Okay, so that's good. All right, so we're just gonna let those dry. Now, while those are drying, we can go ahead and mix in some of the darker hair color. I'm gonna get some brown, get some blue, get more blue, get more brown. Let's see here. Yeah, I definitely want to get more brown. It looks too gray. That's good. That's a good dark brown. So the way we're going to do it is... Remember that the light is coming from the top. So... We're just going to kind of go in, like on the inside here, for example, just slowly and add a little more like here on the inside. And I'm going to add like some strokes like that. So in the volume of the hair, like here on the, there's more like on the bottom because you know like how hair curves and to show the volume, it's like there's more hair like on the or there's more shadow on the bottom as it curves so that's kind of what we're doing here right there and there Okay. Okay. And do that. And slowly, you can you can kind of see like you get an idea. So it's like it's curling. Like there's waves. So the bottom part of the wave is more in shadow. The upper part or the part that sticks out more is more in light. And you also have to keep in mind obviously what's closer to the body and how it's peeking out where the where the light is hitting it. And it doesn't have to be perfect, honestly. You can just kind of play around as long as you show differentiation of light and dark in the hair it'll look interesting nevertheless so it doesn't even really have to make perfect sense as long as it looks interesting to the eye because i've seen a lot of paintings where it's actually where the light is hitting doesn't really make sense but it still looks good um maybe i'll do a whole video on that at some point just to show how you don't actually have to make it make perfect sense to make it look good <laughs> hopefully that sentence made sense i know that i definitely fall into that trap sometimes of trying to make it look as it would in real life but it doesn't always work especially when you're doing sci-fi things sci-fi or fantasy because sometimes things are I don't know, they don't necessarily obey the laws of physics. Let's see, let me get some right there. And then 
definitely in here. A little darker like that. And like that. Okay, just some strokes right there. Trying to sh emphasize the that there's hair. Like doing some strokes like that just to show that there's strands of hair. And maybe a little bit right there. Darker like that. Also, she's a warrior, so it, sh her hair doesn't have to be like perfectly kept, you know. It's okay if it's just, a, if it looks a little frizzled here and there. Looks good so far. I'm gonna rinse my brush. Now we will go back to the skin color that we had mixed in the beginning, which is this one right here. I'll go ahead and grab a bunch of it. And we'll go ahead and we'll do a little line right there, like that. And then a line. Like that. And also a line like that, showing the depth of the kneecap. Depth of the kneecap. Okay. Like this. Kind of remembering that the light source is coming from right above. And covering this part just because there's a lot of hair there, so there's a lot of shadow. Like that, and then right here, right there, underneath the armor. Okay, and then right there. There's a bit of a concentration here. I'm going to just pick it up. And then there's a bunch in the neck here. Just because obviously the, the face and the chin are creating a, a lot of shadow on the neck. So we'll go like that. That looks good. And a little bit in the, in the ear. Like that. And then a little bit over here, hopefully I'm not blocking the camera, a little bit over here because of the hair, that's kind of like that, like that, and then also under this eyebrow like that, and just go slowly, just go slowly, don't, don't try to brush. Definitely want to take your time on this, like that. And also a little bit under the nose, just a little bit like that. So far so good. And then here for the for the ear. Okay, I'll rinse my brush. So it's looking pretty good so far. Now while that dries, we can go ahead and pick up that uh, the dark skirt color. And so a lot of the water has evaporated while it's just been sitting there while I've been painting other parts. So now it's more concentrated. So we can use that for the shading. So like, for example, we'll just go right there and kind of around the finger there and like that. And, you know, you, 
can kind of outline the wrinkle here just show some strokes going in like that okay kind of like that and also over here kind of like a little bit underneath the fold of the skirt right there definitely underneath this belt and here like that and right here and then the shadow for where the arm is and the belt some wrinkles here and then also over here the skirt going in under the armor and then just a little bit here for the fold of the skirt there we go okay looks good so far I'm gonna rinse our brush okay so next actually we'll go back to our other plate we're going for the for the silver or not the silver the gray but we gotta make it darker now because we'll be using that for the for the shadows on the metal parts add a little more blue and actually I'm just gonna add just a little bit of black just a little bit and of course that's too much yeah that's way too dark so I'm just gonna grab more blue and just mix it in mix it in okay that's that's actually good that looks good go ahead and use that so first I'll go ahead the butt of the sword I'm just gonna add a little bit right there right there right there kind of like that a little bit of an outline here for the hilt Okay, so that looks good. And we're gonna go in for the armor. Okay, like that, and like that, in here. This is all the shadow on the armor. And see how adding that in helps the colors around it pop more. So all of this is going to be covered. And then this shoulder armor giving a little bit of a shadow to the one underneath. And then a little bit of curvature there on that shadow. Okay, right there. Okay. And then this part right there. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, cool. Oh, maybe a little bit here in the earring. Like that. And that should be it for those parts. I mean, so far, brush. And I'm just gonna go and get some straight brown right from the palette. And what I'm gonna do with that is I'm just gonna go in and follow these patterns on the glove. There we go, just slowly. Looks good. And that one. And that one. Just go very slowly. Okay. So that all looks good. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and actually mix up a darker brown. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit of the black and mix it in with the brown. Let me see how that looks. That's a bit too dark. Get more brown. More brown. I'm actually gonna get a little bit of red. Let's see how that looks. And need more, maybe a little more black. Uh, what I, I'm doing here is I'm trying to mix the color to add detail and shadow to the uh, parts that are brown, like the boots, the sword, the belt, and this like let's see if we throw a little bit of that in there kind of like outline a little bit a little bit here underneath where the sword is sheathed and like that so a line there and another like there and then underneath the belt here a little bit like that. And then also here for the boot, just kind of where the shadow would be. And also where the shadow of the arm is, kind of like that. Here, there's a bit of a shadow. Now, keep in mind, when they dry, all of these colors will look much lighter. So, you can already kind of tell, like, right here, it's starting to dry, so it looks lighter. And it will continue to look more and more lighter. But, okay, so we're good on that. And then I'm actually going to get a little bit of this color, a little bit of the yellow ochre, and a little bit of brown, just to show some differentiation on the handle, the sword handle, uh, between the different like strips of leather that are, that are like woven in here. There we go. That makes it look better. Like that. Looks good. I'm gonna rinse my brush. And go back to my other plate. And then I'm just gonna grab that darker color that we used for the hair. Almost forgot to do the eyebrows here. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Careful. All 
right, that looks good. And then I'm gonna go back to my other. So I'm just gonna get the yellow ochre. And I'm just gonna kinda mix it in with the previous one where we had the brown in it. So I'm just gonna use this as a shadow for, right, that's too much on there, too much. So I'm just gonna use like that. And a little bit over here, a little bit over here. I'll clear that up a little bit and pick up some of that excess. There we go. And I'm also gonna use the same color over here for where the fingers are kind of folding in around the, the leg. And then here on the side, a bit like that, right here, also a little bit on the side, I'm rinse that off, okay, so we're close to being done with this one, we just gotta mix up a color for the rock that she's sitting on. I'll just get some of this some of this gray and mix it in with some of this brown, which should give us kind of like a, a very dull greenish color. actually just get a little bit of green uh, and some brown I'm trying to get a very neutral kind of like rock color which I don't know maybe something like that it needs to be more on the gray side though that's too, I mean, that's pretty gray, but let me just get more of that. It's, it's too brown. Okay, so I think that's a little, yeah, that, that'll do. We can use that. Just go in right there. that and on this side okay that's good and next we just want to get some blue for the background because she's just sitting outside in the open sky, hanging out under the open sky, I should say. We can get some blue. But we don't want the blue to be too strong. Okay, and just kind of put it all around her. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just a suggestion that she is outside. There we go. Maybe get a little more of the blue. OK, 
Okay. I'm leaving out, like, I'm not going all the way to the edge of the paper just because it makes it look more interesting. Uh, you know, kind of, like, a lot of picture books, they'll have, like, almost like a vignette of where the characters are and where the situation is. And since since this book is the theme of fairy tales, I figure that's pretty fitting. Okay, I'm going to rinse off my brush. I'm going to step back, look at it. So yeah, I'd say that this one is pretty much done. Um, now you could stop here and it looks great just on its own. But just like the other ones, um, I am going to add in the black outlines. And you can use a regular pen. Um, I'm actually going to try to do that, see how it works. I'm just, I use my fountain pen whenever I do the outlines just because I don't want to block the camera. Um, let's see, let's see if I can do this. So, so like right there. Let me see, let me make sure I'm not blocking the camera. See, it's kind of hard to, yeah, I'm going to, I can't really do that without blocking the camera. So I'm just going to use this one. Yeah, but they, they look the exactly the same. Going like that. Maybe just a couple of strokes here for the hair. A couple over here. Maybe some outline for the ears. kind of carefully fill in the eyes and if you're using a ballpoint pen where you need to rest your hand more on the actual image make sure that it's dry completely first so you don't run into any issues with that I'm actually gonna add a little bit here to her upper eyelashes just slowly and carefully that's I'm not gonna add any other detail in the face just because I don't want to like mess it up and you could be a little more loose with uh, your strokes in the hair Short strokes here for the bottom of the hair. And the armor. I'm always like doubtful whether or not to actually do an outline on the chin just because it can make it, it can really mess it up if it's too strong of an outline. And just continue kind of working at the hair, making the short strokes. 
See, that, that changes the, the look so much. And then we can add detail here for the armor. And as previously mentioned on the other pages, you don't have to outline everything. You just kind of pick and choose what you, what you think looks good. Uh, definitely more where there's shadows. You can always add a little bit like some squiggly lines just to like, I think I'm running out of ink. But basically like, for example, like here, you can just do like a little bit like this, just to show that there's folds there. But yeah, let's see how that looks. Cool, yeah, I think that's done. It looks very close to the original, so we are good to go. Okay, so that was what? Ooh, 50... 53 minutes. Well, hopefully you were able to hang in there with me. If not, always remember you don't have to do the whole thing at once. You can always just work on it and come back later. Totally fine. Um, also, feel free to tag me. I love seeing what people do. Um, so far, I've seen a lot of cool iterations that people have done, kind of like in their own style. Because you just have the base image. You can just really do whatever you want with it. But this is it for this one. And uh, I'll have the last page up soon. I'll see you next time.